Yay Media Group. Welcome to Real Talk Young Podcast. Actually, I have my gorgeous husband with me a lot in these podcasts, and you are my favorite co-partner, co-host. I'm your only favorite. <laughs> and actually, it's the, it's the Angelo and the Real Talk Kim Move podcast. Over a little bit. I, feel like I think it was Angelo and the Real Talk. I thought we got our copyrights now back. Yes. Our copyrights was saying. I think we look really cute today. Yeah. Like you I'm, look so handsome. Look like I'm taking you out on another date, man. These dates. Don't we love our dates? Hell yeah. Y'all, we are so excited that you are here. We are dead in the middle of couples goals. It was our first masterclass that me and my sweet, gorgeous baby boy are doing together. And we are thoroughly enjoying it. And it's definitely not too late for you to get in it. You go back and watch all the replays. We got people in there from Egypt. We got people in there from uh, South Africa. Don't be nervous. Just Man, jump in. we've got, we've been surprising them with stuff. So make sure you go to rtkcouplesgoals.com and sign up. Even if you're watching this three years later, you can do that. And I got a good idea though. What? That somebody may be interested in the person. And just jump in. You mean oh, in couples goals? Yeah, y'all. Because so we've they may, got... be, they may be they may be probably talking to someone trying to figure out this the right person, the right relationship. All they got to do is get in. Because baby, we got some. Yeah. y'all. We have some people in couples goals that are from our gym. Yeah, some some men. But if good you, looking men. But if you think into of, themselves. But if you probably got someone that you've probably been going out with, it's good to like get in here and stuff, and that's kind of everybody mix it up a little. Yeah. Bit. So that way you get in here and stuff, you can ask certain qualified questions. Yeah. We also have funky cars and candy bars on October. Uh, it's Halloween, October 31st. Uh, funky cars and candy bar from 6.30 to 8. Bring all of your kids and get them to Limitless. We pastor the greatest church ever, don't you think? Yeah. Man, I love our church. We pastor Limitless Church, 1653 Highway 85 South, Fayetteville, Georgia, safe. 30215. Every Sunday. That's a safe place to have Halloween. It is. At the it really is. At the church. I know a lot of people talk about it about celebrating Halloween, but we are doing it at the church. So who cares what they say? I know it. I just, yeah. we love community. We do a lot yeah. of stuff about with community in mind at Limitless. And so we, every Sunday have service 10, 11, 30. And if you can't make it into the building, that's okay. You can watch us online via my YouTube channel, which is Real Talk Kim. And make sure while we're at it that we subscribe. Make sure you go subscribe right now, where if you're watching this, whether it's Spotify or iHeartRadio or Apple, Android, uh, Podbean, wherever you're watching this or listening to this podcast, make sure you subscribe. Push that subscribe button. Also share with your friends. If you don't know where the subscribe button is, it's right there below and just subscribe to it. And also make sure you're visiting realtalkkim.com and you can find out all about us, right. our church, um, all of, I got masterminds, which is a one-on-one -on -one coaching. I've got the RTK inner circle, which is my community that I built, uh, lots and lots of incredible things going on and couples goals. So make sure that you are getting there and bring your kids on Halloween. Hallelujah nights, what we call it, uh, for funky cars and candy bars from six to eight 30. It's going to be great. And what time, we, when, when do we normally drop this podcast that way? Because sometimes we still have to ask people to subscribe and they don't. So what, what's the date? That we normally would be Monday, Wednesday. Oh, we always drop so, it on Wednesdays. On Wednesday. So yeah, I we know, always drop it Wednesdays. I know everybody got a busy life. I know it's Wednesday, but if you subscribe. You know every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. Yeah. Every Wednesday. But if you subscribe, you won't miss it. Yeah. And y'all, we yeah. we read all the comments. Yeah. So. Like, we love y'all so much and the way you get into it. Baby, we're going to title this one today, mm -hmm. Breakups Don't Have to Leave You Broken. Breakups. Is that not amazing? Some people break up just to make up. Man, I tell you. Ah! <laughs> break up just to make up. Why? 
Why why do people break up to just to make up? I don't know. It just makes it I feel like here's what I feel like. Here's what I feel like. I feel like that when you um quit arguing, you're in trouble. Mm, so it's healthy. I think arguing is healthy. Because I think that when you lose the desire to fight, you're out. So you become and I don't mean like fighting, like yeah. ugly fighting. Yeah. I mean like just, like you 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 just you, get it off your chest. Yeah. Kind of That's what I do. I just get it off my chest. I don't want to fight. I just get it off my chest. I don't fight. I just like, hey. Oh. I say, you know you can't be doing that, right? And then when I say right, you know that I'm right. You know what I'm saying? What do I do when you start running your mouth you in be, an argument? You be blanking your eyes like this. No, I do <laughs> not. <laughs> I do not. I just get really quiet. You be quiet. Just because I, I've realized I've gotten to really know you. We've been married now you for be talking under your breath. six months. You be talking under your breath. Can you hear me? Yeah, I be hearing you. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh uh-uh. uh. Like what? Y'all say the preacher uh-uh. say that? I did not call him no punk. Y'all don't listen to him. <laughs> You are lying. <laughs> Y'all, we are going to break. Get your RTK journals. We've got some tips. We're going to make you write down. You want to write them down in your RTK uh, podcast journal. And uh, we'll be right back right after this. You ain't even kidding. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We are... Angelo. And... Real Talk Real Kim. Talk Kim. So excited hey, to hear, baby. Welcome, welcome to our podcast. Welcome to our podcast. We have had the most interesting, interesting, and light. Fast, fast. It's been, it's been yeah, good. Yeah, it's been so good. And it's been, we've really gotten into some strong topics. And if you did not watch exactly. our previous podcast in the month of October, we've talked about cheating. We've talked about. Uh, 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 DMing and liking single women's posts and single men's posts. And we've talked about porn. We've talked about all of it. And it's just been a very great and enlightening um, coming from our, we, we've really been talking about a lot of relationship talks this month because we've been doing couples goals. Couples goals and singles. That's in our couples goals. Yeah. So the singles in the couples goal is, is someone that's thinking, that's looking, hopefully, to find the right person or being in the right situation and knowing what they're looking for. That way, because, you know, what do the lonely do for Christmas? Yeah. That way, they, that way they'll be around somebody. Uh, they'll be around the right person. And hopefully, you know, because October, you'll have the Christmas tree up. Yeah. I will definitely have the Christmas tree up October. Two of them. In fact, I'd like to put up October 1st, if you, you'll let me. Yeah, you're giving away one, right? <laughs> See, he go baby give one of my trees away. Okay, baby. So, um, w- w- the, today's topic is breakups don't have to leave you broken. Broken breakups don't have to leave you broken. Number one thing that I wrote down was after a breakup, you have to rediscover yourself because a lot of times you've lost yourself in that relationship. And now you don't even really know who you are anymore because you don't know yourself without that person. And so rediscovering yourself looks like this. Right. Before you start heading out on dates, make sure you've made time to date yourself. You say this all the time. Make sure that you love you. Can you expound on that? Yeah, I always do. Yeah. So nine times out of 10... I mean, you kind of do everything for everybody else in a. You do everything for that person in the relationship, and then when you don't, and that when you break up from the relationship, you find yourself broken. Yeah. And then you try to, and then when you meet the right person, and he may be running late or something, he say, "Hey, can you pick up me a couple? Can you grab a grab me a, a brown sugar shake, espresso? Yeah. Venti. Yeah." That's, that's the, my order. That's your coffee, you know. Yeah. Or, or basically, he's driving. He's he's. This is the he, new guy. Yeah, yeah, the new guy. You and know? you're not appreciating him because you're still broken from the old guy, right? And ah. uh, and he just take your car and go get the oil change and get it balanced and get Yo, it. No, he's and, talking about and, all the stuff and, he does and for get me. it and get it detailed and stuff and and like wow. I want to tell you See, something. See, because that's some things that you do for the other person that didn't appreciate it and didn't appreciate it. So you probably say, 
I'm not going to do that stuff because I... First of all, she didn't appreciate it. Then so she, then she, it. then she didn't even ask me how much did it cost me, you know. And, and you had a, you had, you had an exotic, you had an exotic wheel place that got high speed nitrogen and balance and stuff. And like, so, baby, were you cost. in relationships before me where they didn't appreciate stuff you do for me? I think, I think so. Cause, cause and I'm so glad you didn't quit doing them because you spoiled me rotten. Because you know, if you say you was a millionaire, I could have made you. A billionaire and made your company worth more. So, so they didn't listen to you like I do. No, they didn't listen. Some people, some people are comfortable in their own skin and they're comfortable where they at. I'm really thankful that you didn't allow that to scar you. But we have to understand that it's seven. You have to understand that, uh, and it's seventeen hundred millionaires created mm. every day. Yeah, you ain't the only one doing what you're doing. And this is the reason why we here at Limitless we planned on making everyone comfortable. And being yep. successful yep. wherever they want to be at, wherever they want to go in life. Yep. With, I think yeah. the reason that you got to rediscover yourself, baby, is right. because there's so many areas that you have neglected that were so great about you. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times when relationships begin to end, they begin to attack areas of you that are very awesome. Because they're insecure. When you when you when you break up, you need to rediscover yourself. I mean, like I whenever I went on a, when I, when I, when I got divorced, I made it a point to do things that my ex thought was lame, mm -hmm. because I wanted to do them, mm -hmm. and I had discovered that I would always just go with him, go with the flow. And so whenever I got divorced, I started rediscovering me. Like I I found you know, the things that he thought was lame and I began to do them or I, uh, uh, things I desired that he wouldn't do with me. I began to do and rediscovering myself. What were you, what were you thinking? I mean, what would you like to do? I mean, now you got, the, now you got women out here saying they got, you say the, your favorite line and say you a uh, bill of bear. Build a bear. Yeah. Well, I believe that I was a builder bear. Yeah. I think that every single thing that I preach, I preach because I was her. Right. And I allowed myself to really dumb myself down to be in these relationships only because, and I'm not saying that ugly, I'm saying that their character couldn't keep up with me, their purpose. They, they didn't have the drive I have. I mean, I, I, I was in a relationship where they, it wasn't his fault that he was ready to retire. Right. It was my fault that I married someone too, so, so much older than me. Right. And so it's once we find ourselves in a new start up and a start over, when we rediscover ourselves, we find out there's things about us that we really enjoy doing that we forgot we enjoyed doing because we were allowing uh, ourselves to settle. Yeah. You know that he was a grandpa. You know, he wasn't. Oh, he, hush he, up. If you know he was a grandpa, you know, he didn't want to go to Aspen and go to the mountains and ski or Utah <laughs> and those fun things. I tell you one thing. You when know, I, when grandpa, I started dating you, please yeah. believe. Well, you know that he was, you was driving too fast in the car and he was, he was nervous and like, <laughs> Watch that car. You, you know, pump the brakes. And listen, stuff. Whenever you know, you I, when I started dating you, and I tell you, I, when I started dating you, I was very, very intentional about making sure that you were, I was com com very uh, attracted to you. Um, I knew that would never be a problem for us. Number two, you love to do things. Oh, yeah. You love to get out. You love to dress up. We are so much alike, oh, yeah, yeah. but we, not. We stay fresh to death. I mean, we stay, I look at us. I bet mean, it ain't no Bucky jeans around here, Listen. whatever that place is. I mean, like, hey, I mean, I ain't, you didn't find me. Hey, you, mm -mm, you found me like this. <laughs> I love it. And that's what it is. Maybe that's why you told me, say, drive, Grandpa. You remember I was dropping you <laughs> off to the airport? You say, drive, drive Grandpa. I said, I'm just trying to. Did I? Yeah, drive, Grandpa. And I'm like, was that the beginning? Yeah, I'm like, who are you talking to? <laughs> I said, I'm gonna show you what I got now. I'm gonna show you Fast and Furious was filmed in Florida, so we know how to drive around here. I'm not from Atlanta, so what happened when I said that? Oh, I punched that gas and got you there. And ever since now, you'd be like, hey, slow down a little bit. Now, like you try so to. So make sure you ask, yeah. make sure you're thinking before you say something oh, yeah. to an alpha. I, I drive from the turnpike to the wood grain. You've even got tickets because got, you don't use your blinker. I got tickets and stuff. I'm. I'm an SR22 driver back in the day, so I know what it's I know what it's like to to, have, to pay for high insurance and have a lot of speed tickets. And get out of my way. I said drive. I drive Grandpa. 100. I, yeah, I, I'm trying to like see where we at. So I'm like, I, I drive 100 on the highway. You know, oh get out of my gosh. way. So it's like, but but I knew I knew right then. I say she must be thinking I'm that grandpa she was with. I'm like I'm not that grandpa, but now 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 you know. But I'm I'm fighting all those tickets. 
Yo, listen to me. I'm he fighting did it. Every, I beat, he did it. I beat the tickets. He did everything they said he did, and yeah. this joker is fighting the tickets. I beat it. I beat it. I took it to court, and I beat it. But you did it. I beat you it. You didn't use your blinker. You I, still don't use your blinker. How do you see it when you was in the car? You, I know how you. Did the, how did the police see it when he didn't have it on his dash cam, or he didn't have he it? He fought it one. He didn't have it on on his on, on, This is the problem. I mean. I mean, look. Oh, gosh. Number two, yeah. <laughs> grieve the end of your marriage if you need to. Grieve it. Stop jumping from relationship to relationship. Grieve it. When you are spending time on your own, you may start to reflect on the parts of your life or yourself. Even if you are, even if you've lost your spouse, this goes for death. Oh, did they die? This oh. goes from grieving oh, okay. and everything. Because we can't grieve. They're having like a divorce party out here these days. <laughs> Even when my marriage ended and it was so toxic, I was so thankful. But when that thing went through, mm -hmm. I found myself a little sad. Well, Not sad because that marriage was. So you had to go back to Mimi's house? <laughs> <laughs> Not sad. I didn't have to go back to my Mimi's house See? on that one. Oh. Not sad that the marriage was over because it was not good. Yeah. Sad because I found myself in a divorce again. Sad that the very thing that I wanted my whole life, I couldn't find. I had all the money. This was just seven years ago, six years ago. I had all the money. I have all the houses I want, all the cars. But the one thing I wanted was a man to protect me, love me, like Christ loves the church, fight for me, have my name in rooms I wasn't in. And that was the one thing. And, and, and so I grieved it. And so then I had to I had to grieve it enough to You can walk around the house and, and, and feel at peace though. Oh my or god, you, I see. Or you can stay in a divorce and someone <sighs> calls Stay in a bad marriage. Stay in a stay in a bad stay in a bad marriage and someone just still name calling you time you wake up and you feel hit, your feet hit the ground. You know what's really so it's sad? Kind of like what is that? Like You know what's really sad is you know I was raised in the church and we preach that God hates divorce. And you do not know how many times I have heard people give people in the church, stay with them. They cuss you out morning till night. They are so toxic, but stay with them. You have to submit to them. And I have seen people literally stay in these relationships. I know a lady right now, she's 87 years old. Her and her husband have not lived together for 42 years and she never got divorced and she never moved on because of the way she was raised. Oh, God. And this man has had four or five families. Never married another one because he wouldn't divorce either. Can you believe that? Man, when God is a God of grace and mercy, yes, God hates divorce. But God also never told you to get in that relationship. Stay in there for 40 years. Yes. She is literally 87 years old. Wow. And never got divorced because she had children with this man. It's like the woman at the... <laughs> at the well. At the but well. The, the woman at the well, she got divorced. Yeah, she got divorced. And she was living with one that wasn't her well, spouse, yeah. probably because of... That church religion. The yeah, church religion. Saying you can't be used of God. Yeah. God is a God of grace and mercy. Yeah. Here's the next one. This is huge. Keep an eye out for old patterns. In this relationship that you and I are in, we've been married for six months, um, been together for two years. Um, the one thing that 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 I really had to pay attention to was my patterns. You didn't really have any. No, I didn't have any pattern because I was divorced for over 20 years. So, yeah. you know, you kind of realize and stuff that, you know, you date someone or you was in a relationship. But you were in a very committed relationship for yeah. eight years yeah. after that. Yeah. So really the patterns that I look at uh, of someone is the communication part. What does that look like? If you don't have communication... Then that breaks down everything. Did you, can you think of any point where you saw me repeating patterns or you saw it was a pattern? Can you remember something that happened? I can't remember. I can't recall. I mean, because we've done pretty good. Yeah, we're pretty. I mean, I mean, it's, it's early. It's new. <laughs> it's been two years. I mean, it's, I mean, it's still. You know, we would definitely. I we've mean, been living people, together for when, six months. But people, 
people have been looking at relationship where they were like, okay, you did this, but it, and people look at understanding that uh, you we newly were still. But we're on the honeymoon I, and stage. And people, um, people like you know what, they look at it, they they talk about it, they hold it under their breath, they got their little comments and stuff. But you know what, a marriage is is a, is a working marriage. Yeah. Yeah. So you still have to work on your oh relationship. You still have yeah. to work on your relationship. So there's no perfect. It's not a perfect. You know, you know what? Not every every marriage is per perfect. I really no matter who you are. I really you're feel like that I did have some patterns, and yeah. I remember one time I did something just protecting myself in a relationship. And I remember you quickly was like, I love you and I'm not going anywhere. That just mean, but I need you, you to fix it. I mean, that mean I'm letting you know that, 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 that saying counselor right that my saying time that, that mean, I don't have that much time to play around for with. real. Yeah. That's what you were saying to me. Yeah. Yeah. That time and timing is, is short. When you got someone that's got uh, 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 that they that they have something that they think they're entitled to do, yeah. just because you did it with someone else, yeah, you know, because you don't know that you didn't know me, yeah. I mean, you didn't see my temper, yeah, and then you don't know how patient I'm gonna be because you acting out. Yeah. Like someone like you like, oh girl, they don't know you. They don't, they, you know, you, and, and what it is is you may have your friends yeah. that look up to you so much and yeah. say, girl, you ain't gonna take nothing off no man. Yeah. Well, guess what? You and your girlfriend eat together and always for Christmas and always for holidays because you don't have anybody. God, that is so now you, huge. Yeah. That you pay attention to even who your friends are, yeah. what they're saying to you. Girl, you don't you, I don't uh, hang out with a lot of single women. Yeah. I, I don't. So that's where. What do we have in common? Yes, yeah, people that even even but but still even if someone that's single, they know you because they spend more time with you, and now you're in a new relationship, yeah. and they have to say, you know, I, you, I know you don't take this. I know that you ain't gonna allow this. So basically, you when a man tells you something like that, he's basically telling you, I don't have a whole lot of time. For yeah, this. yeah, I got a lot of time. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because your world, your world is, and, and your CEO, or your company is, is a, where where you look at it up here. He don't look. He look at it. I can be ten different states right now, and I'm playing around. How long? How I'm much do you think a man you. will put up with for a woman he loves? A smart mouth woman. For real. Smart mouth, raggly mouth, in a raggly car or a nice car. It doesn't even or matter. Or the big house or a mansion. It doesn't matter. The vice president, don't care who you are. Yeah, zero. Could really? Guess, could guess what? You still by yourself, right? Ain't it crazy that- It's not like you, it's not like you had so many people lined up. You know how many people lined up? As a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a person that's out here that want to be in a relationship, I mean, we look at certain celebrities even these days. J-Lo. I mean, gosh. I'm in a relationship from Puffy to Ben Affleck to A Rod. As a woman, you can't put yourself in those. I don't believe it's her. I don't care who it is. As a woman, I don't care who it is. How do we look at it as a woman? Even our producer just rolled yeah, his eyes at me. I don't care who it is. I just don't. I think that as a woman, you've been in those relationships and you've been in this marriage and stuff. I mean, I do think it takes two to tango. And I just think that it's a it's a point of time that you have to look at yourself now. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that's what I did. Yeah, you have to look at yourself because it's basic. I mean, and a man don't want to look like a fool, and a woman and don't want to look like a fool. Nobody wants to look like a fool. Uh -uh. So it's like, well, who fooling who? Who, uh -huh. who zooming? Who zooming who? Right <sighs> now at this point. So, so that question is keep an eye out for patterns. Here's another one. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's another one. The other one is step outside your comfort zone. This is huge. Step outside your comfort zone. Date something that ain't on your on your dream board. So what are you doing? I know you, you went Be out. Be willing to I know you went out not with, date your type. Yeah, I know you went out with a couple of praise worship guys and pirates. <laughs> Only one, sir. They was knocking over the water and everything. It was goofy. You want a couple of goofy praise guys and a couple of goofy pastors and stuff like that. And you know this and, Because and, in my head I thought I was gonna need to marry someone in ministry. And they because said, that's what I've been told. And now you and now you were this guy with these dreadlocks like Billy. God, I'm so like, thankful. You were this guy with all this hair and dreadlocks like Billy D. Williams and, and stuff I like that. So what did they say? Baby, I do not think if you're a woman in ministry, you should marry a man in ministry. 
I absolutely do not think so because you're going to both have this competitive. I you're mean, the I woman mean, ain't necessarily going to do it, but I, the man's going to want you to be quiet because he's the pastor. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I really don't know. I think it's just about how they, how they get along. Do they, do, 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 sometimes they, they like each other as. I mean, especially a woman that's already very well established. Like I went out with this guy one time and this guy said his friends kept telling him, dude, there ain't no way you're going to be able to marry her. There's no way you are going to be able to call her your pastor. Like your wife, your pastor, that is weird. And so that led me to believe that I'm never going to get married because I'm a pastor. That's, that's what God's called me to do. But the only thing I never that... dreamed God was going to bring me into your life and you are this phenomenal. I mean, you just got a whole custom suit made with first man in it. <laughs> yeah, but... I mean, you named yourself that. Yeah, but the thing is that we kind of look at everybody. It's not every. No one is perfect. No. I mean, whether you're dating, both of you are in the ministry. It's no neither one of you. So perfect. it is possible for you to. You got to open up that Bible and read to me. You don't. You can't. You can't tell me everything what you experience yeah. unless you open up that Bible. Yeah. So you can't tell me you experience everything in life. Yeah. As we grow in life, as we go every day, we grow every day. Yeah. So if if I was in ministry, yeah, and what I came up in a Pentecostal, my aunt was a pastor yeah. of a church. Yeah. So I looked at her as as a woman. I looked at her as a pastor. Yeah. So I put things in perspective. Yeah. I don't put things in church ways that we look at. And say, well, this this person is a guard. No, I, I got one guard. Yeah. We have one guard. Just because you're a pastor, you're not guard. Yeah. So, but at that at when I start when I had to think about how I was dating you. I look at you as a woman, not as my pastor. Yeah. So that's why I look at you. That's so good. So when guys look at a woman and stuff, you and you a pastor of this church. I don't care how big your church is. Yeah. Because guess what? If you ain't doing right by God, guess what? Yeah. We've seen a lot of churches and stuff from Baker. They gone. Yeah. Yeah. If you ain't doing right by God, God will remove it. Yeah. And he will remove you. So I think that we need to look at each other and stuff. As people. As people. It's people and grow it and grow every day and realize that you're building empires together. Yeah, that's so good. Well, y'all, we are so excited. This has been a great podcast. Yes. We've had some great, great. If you did not watch the other podcast, you have to go back in this month and just go underneath and just hit this playlist and yeah. listen to all and of this. Put your comments so in. I see the comments saying we we really do. I see the comments saying Pastor Low. I, I, <laughs> it is so funny. Yeah, everybody's calling you Pastor Low. Y'all, yeah. we'll be right back after this break. Hello, everyone. We're back. Baby, listen. So on break, we were talking about yes. there's a podcast called uh, The Diary of a CEO. And there's a couple on there that is she's written like 600 books. They're both like uh, very successful, but they're opposite. The op they're opposites. Yeah. And you're not you're not opposites, but we're so much alike. Oh, yeah. Like we love the same things. Isaiah 54. Yeah, Isaiah 54. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> what does it say? What does it say, baby? I mean, um, Come on. I, I, I think. No weapon. No weapon should form against yeah! me. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we are we are alike, but we still, yeah. I mean, we are opposite, but we still more alike uh, in Christ. So We really but, are. And, and, and it's a beautiful thing because. You are one of the biggest soul winners. I mean, like you're a bigger soul winner than I am. At the gym, you're always inviting people to church. Right. You're always so though we and we really pastor them together because where I get up in the in the in the church and preach, you are behind the scenes. You run in a lot of stuff back there now, security and yeah. you really are getting us in in order. I think people don't really know where my people have to really know where your heart is at. And just where's your heart? Just your heart come from somewhere that you that, that you want to give. And and we had a neighborhood store where we was giving credit to people that couldn't afford groceries. Yeah. And and they was they was getting credit and buying getting groceries and stuff like they was going into Kroger's and Winn Dixie and stuff. Yeah. So we gave them a lot of food. So now I'm able to give here. Yep. at the church and give them what I have in my heart. I love that. So that's the same thing where I came from. Yeah. So, but basically as church and we growing up and someone that say that I'm a pastor, that how do you normally give? How do you normally provide for your ministry? How do you yeah. provide to your community? 
So ba- and basic, you've really stretched us I've with been, the community piece. I've been feeding at the, Limitless. I've been feeding the community. I've been feeding people yeah. hearts. I've been feeding your ideas. How you gonna be able to become? Someone. And you really do, babe. Like even when I'm studying for my sermons, right. you're always dropping. Yeah. You're always dropping like giving me sermons. Like I think one time we did the umbrella. That was your idea. But it's like you, 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 you get you like, baby, what are you preaching? And you always give me your spin on it. I love that. And who would have thought that if I would have been stuck in what people thought I should do, I would have never married you. Yeah. And you have been the most perfect gift in my life. So people don't ever know where you come from. So if, the, if you had to take someone that's just like you, that we have so much in common, it's like you're almost trying to outdo each other. Yeah. She's like, oh man, I preached over here at Dominion too as well. And that was in July. And it was like 10,000 people and stuff. And I'm like, and I can say, well, I played in front of 20,000 people and stuff. And I was able to stick this guy. He was the number one offensive guy in the, you know, whatever. But it's like you always, it's like you always I was trying, trying up. Yeah, it's like I'm a one. Let me up, up you. I'm a up. Let me up you. Yeah, I'm up you. We are yeah. not uppers. Yeah. If I win, you win. Yeah. You win, I win. And it's like, you know, storytellers it's like a storytelling who's trying to outdo each other you know what's so funny in our relationship too i am a get to the get get to the point get to the point you are a storyteller right and i have learned in this relationship to just listen because you're going to tell me every little detail and i love that well you see it i mean you see it and i talk about some of my close friends and then able to those guys was a little younger than me then i kind of I I I I came in their life at the right time, and now they're probably in their forties or thirty five or something. Retired from playing sports, and now you was able to meet their wife. We went to lunch together. We yeah, in, so you're saying Houston. you're saying you better be glad I listened to your stories. Don't you just went around? Yeah, saying, but when you just telling me, you telling me something that you telling Maybe me. Maybe somebody said the other day on our podcast they were like. Angelo goes all the way around, and you do not know where he's coming from, and then all of a sudden you get it. Well, because they because I'm talking to a lot of church. I'm talking church, but I'm telling you real stories in real life, and you tell me because you go to church, and then you go to church on Sunday. What you? Oh, so you're saying we're real, we're real religious. You're real religious. You're You're real religious, (laughs) and and anything that I, anything that you can tell me, you tell me what happened in church. And so you're talking outside of church. I got you outside. I took you from outside. You're right. I took you from the outside and brought you to church. Uh huh. Knock Uh knock on the door. No one's knocking on the door from church to to bring you in. No one coming in that uh, yeah. knocked on your door and say, maybe you're a uh, Jehovah's Witness kingdom knock on the door. Jehovah's yeah. Witness. But I don't know. I don't, Jehovah's I don't, brought, hey, I don't brought a king. Well, Jehovah's Witness. But I, but I can tell you this. When you act like you're perfect, that's in church. You're right. How many people have you brought to church? You're right. How many people have, have followed you? Yeah. So this Amen. is, this is where we at. Yep. That basically, how really, how good really are you? Yeah. 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 Well, we're going to end on that. <laughs> Y'all, thank y'all so much for joining us. We have had so much fun with you uh, in our church clothes today. Church clothes. Our church clothes. Custom. We have, listen, we got another week for you in October. Super. So we cannot wait to see you. Make sure you get to Funky Cars and Candy Bars on Halloween and make sure you come to church or tune in every Sunday, 10 and 1130, 1653, Highway 85 South Fayetteville, Georgia 30215. We are called Limitless Church. We welcome you, whether it's online or in the building. Yeah. Knock on the door. Bring somebody to church. Yes, bring somebody to church. We love you guys. Make sure you go to realtalkkim.com and be a part. You're still not too late to join Droptober. Yay, Media Group.